So let's talk about it because I mean, we all have them, right? Those days where you feel like sad for no real specific reason and that everyone else seems to be doing okay. So why aren't you? And you kind of just know that today nothing will be able to cheer you up. You won't be able to just, you know, snap out of it. So what I'm thinking is that instead just kind of embrace those days, like to just admit defeat and be okay with feeling sad and lonely and totally sorry for myself. And whenever I accept that it's going to be one of those afternoons, it's strange, but I feel like when you accept it, there's almost something sweet about those sad, lonely, slow days, especially if you treat yourself with some sad, lonely, slow luxuries. Personally, I really like being alone. I feel like there's so many things that I do best when I'm sitting by myself for hours and I have quite a routine about it, sort of like an alone time ritual. I think it almost always starts with like putting on comfortable clothes and lighting some candles. Oh, and of course with tea. Every day I have sencha tea, which I mix in a bit of matcha powder into. I also love smoked teas like lapsang and roasted rice genmaicha and jasmine. Those are probably my favorite kinds. But if I need to treat myself, I have a few more specialties that I only take out on special occasions, like calm Sunday mornings or definitely on sad afternoons. There's this place in Soho called My Cup of Tea, I think, something like that. And they have an amazing selection of more unusual Japanese teas. Lately, I've been into their soba cha, which is basically just roasted buckwheat, so no tea leaves at all, actually. Whenever I'm alone, I read. That's what I do. It's sort of how I meditate, I guess. It calms me more than anything else. And if I have a busy week where I don't have time to properly read, I feel all wrong. And if you ask me, there is no better way to spend a sad afternoon than with other semi-sad people in books. It's like a comfort being in someone else's sad mind, reading their sad thoughts about like how difficult it can be to just be alive, if you know what I mean. I think it can be a bit risky though, because most books are to me actually too sad to read when you're sad yourself. It needs to be the right kind of sad, like a kind atmospheric sadness, if that makes sense. There can't be any like cynicism or harshness, that just makes me feel worse. I'm more talking about books like M Train or All the Lovers in the Night or Normal People or Kokoro that has like that sweet melancholy to it without making you lose like hope in humanity. So even though I love books like Luster and the Outline Trilogy and everything by Tessa Moshfeg, they're too dark for me on days when I'm already sort of suffering. I need to be like careful with what I consume on days when I'm fragile because I'm so kind of impressionable and sensitive to moods and emotions. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but I kind of have learned to stay away from certain things when I'm in a sad state. And it has really helped me quite a lot. Actually, this is one of the things I think about in my own writing as well. Like I want to write novels that are like safe to read, even if you are a bit sensitive or fragile. So who knows, maybe one day when another YouTuber makes book recommendations on what to read on sad days, maybe they'll recommend my book. Wouldn't that be the dream? Anyway, it's out in June, but you can pre-order the book already now if you want. It's actually super helpful to me if you do, because it helps like to get bigger orders from bookshops and everything. So I really appreciate the help if you feel like it. A big, big thank you to Vilroy and Boch for sponsoring me and this video. So you know how much I love their beautiful ceramics and tableware and some of my absolute kitchen favorites are from Vilroy. I've shown you the Laboule before. It's a staple in our household by now. I love the color and the textures of these plates, how clever the design is when you stack them. And during Black Friday week, you can actually get 20% off. So a great opportunity to get some gifts for the holidays. Recently, I've been feeling these huge tumblers and they have become my go-to drinking glasses for really like everything. They're even great for wine. I mean, they're so aesthetic, right? But also I just like how luxurious they feel in your hand. My newest love is the Artisona teapot. I mean, hello, how pretty is it? It's like in between Japanese mood and 60s modernism. Good, right? If you know any tea lover, if maybe you are one yourself, this is surely the perfect Christmas gift or holiday gift. Today, since we're talking about those like sad and blue winter days, I'm setting up for a Saturday brunch, which has kind of become somewhat of a weekly routine for David and me. On Saturday mornings or sometimes Saturday afternoons, we sit down at the corner of this table with the sun coming in through the balcony doors and we eat a huge brunch. Although we usually keep it quite healthy with sauteed spinach and one of the best things in the world, silken tofu with black salt. 
which tastes weirdly a lot like egg. We buy the black salt online, but you can usually find it in Asian and specifically Indian supermarkets. Yes, I like being healthy, but on especially sad days though, I feel like croissants or vegan lox bagels isn't even too excessive. We always also do the crossword puzzle in the New Yorker with mixed results, but it's nice because it makes us feel like a smart, cultured kind of couple, you know? Even though this is something I do together with David, I'm actually one of those people who love cooking for myself when I'm eating alone too. I think that whenever I make a bit of an effort with food when I'm lonely, it makes being alone like a good thing instead of a sad thing, you know what I mean? This is how I like to set up for brunch. I mean, you've probably seen it on my Insta stories a bunch of times by now. And yes, I 100% enjoy it more because the table is beautiful. And it's definitely harder to feel sad when you're having romantic croissants in the sun with a New Yorker crossword puzzle. It's like a proven fact. Anyway, if you want to take a look at all the pieces in my brunch setup, click the link below. And thanks again to Wilder & Bock for sponsoring this video. I think music is really important. And again, if I'm feeling sensitive to find like the exact right mood in the music I'm listening to really has a big impact on me. Lately, I've been having this one album on repeat. It's this classical piano album by Ido Barshai playing Kupara. Sorry, I have no idea how any of this is pronounced, but it's gorgeous and perfect to read to since there are no lyrics. I don't know, I can't concentrate on reading if there is singing, so I always go for instrumental music. But I mean, if you're sad, there's no one like Billie Holiday, is there? God, I love that woman so much. Her voice and like her presence is just so beautiful. Normally, I can read for hours without getting restless, but on like especially anxious days, I can get sort of antsy if I do it for too long. Do you ever get like that when you like read for ages and you're a bit worried that you feel like you're doing something that's too lonely, like in a bubble? It rarely happens to me, but when it does, I have to do something else like watch a movie or even better is to call and talk to someone if Dave is not around. But sometimes if feeling lonely, as in I can't think of anyone to talk to that would make me feel better, I think some movies are in some moments better company than people even. And just with books, I feel like striking the exact right type of sadness, like sad but not too sad or cynical or dark, is like vital. One of my all-time favorite movies that I can like watch a hundred times is Station Agent. It's so beautiful and sad, but also just like heartbreaking and heartwarming at once. You know one of those slow, gorgeous movies about just humans being humans? Also movies like Blue Gate Crossing and God no words that will sort of just make you feel okay about being a person. Do you have a movie like this that will always make you feel better in that melancholy way? Anyway, since I shot all that gorgeous brunch stuff for this video, I think it's time I sign off now and go finish that silken tofu. Ooh, babe, what do you say? Should we just take the rest of the afternoon off? Watch a movie or something? Why not? You can you can choose the movie. Which one? Uh, Blue Gate Crossing then. Blue Gate Crossing. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the mood for that one too as well. Anyway, I'll leave you guys to it. Maybe uh, you should take the afternoon off you too. I think you should. Why not? Okay. Talk to you in the comments. I want all your sad day recommendations, please, on like books and music and film and food and whatever you got. Hit me with it. Lots of love. Bye bye. Peace, peace.